Johnna, here's where we have some fun. We, I ask you the biggest questions that can be possibly asked and demand that you give very short answers. We promise we won't hold you to it. You can change your mind 20 minutes later. Uh, this is just, uh, a, a, just a, a, a way to uh, explore some of the deepest questions. So here we go. Uh, first question, what do you think the probability is that the current standard model of cosmology would be completely overthrown? Oof, um, completely overthrown. Uh, not very high. I think we might change our minds about certain aspects of dark energy. Okay, great. Um, what is your favorite question that you today do not know the answer to that you would most love to see answered in your professional lifetime? Oof, gosh, so much to choose from. <laughs> so, uh, only um, one, only one. Who's your uh, favorite child? I would, uh, <laughs> I would love to know if there are extra spatial dimensions. Okay, great. Um, next, is the theoretical speculation about a multiverse physics or metaphysics? Hmm. I don't think we have a choice in that. And I don't think nature cares about our distinctions between physics and metaphysics. It might just be the way it is. Okay. <laughs> and our disciplines have to adapt. To okay, that. that's good. I, I might, I might say that is, uh, can be classified under metaphysics, but that's, that's a different <laughs> question. That's a different question. Okay. Now your best guess, uh, are there really multiple universes or is our universe finite or infinite? All, all there is. Best guess, there are multiple universes. Okay. I think it's consistent with the Copernican idea. Okay, uh, next. W was the initial singularity some kind of real beginning or just one of an infinite number of so-called bounces with an infinite past? I can't be sure about the bounces, but I can also imagine that this is an episode on a larger landscape. And, uh, and, and there's some... There's some story there beyond the Big Bang. Okay, but it doesn't have to be a bounce, but it'd be something else like it. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, now on the laws of physics. Uh, are the laws of physics immutable or can they change? Oof, uh, that's a tough one. I think that the laws of physics could conceivably change, not just from universe to universe, but even potentially over the lifetime defined from the point of a big bang to the okay, end Okay, I'm glad you made that distinction. Those are two, two, I was going to do that, you know, in the, in a multiverse, people say that it reshuffles the laws of physics, but within our universe, that's a great answer. Okay. another approach to the laws of physics, I give you three choices. Are they necessary? Are they complete chance or just brute fact? And that ends the conversation. Mm, you are asking me some tough questions. That's the whole point. <laughs> You're not somebody who gets off easy. I I like the idea that they might be brute facts. I'm okay with that. Uh, I don't think that's how the story is going to end. I think they will continue to provoke us to understand things at a deeper level. Is the universe, in some sense, fine-tuned for life and mind? I would be very disappointed if uh, the universe was fine-tuned for life and mind. I just don't believe that. Why would you be disappointed? Oh, I, I don't think that uh, there's anything wrong with a universe that isn't tuned for life or mind in the multiverse picture. Mm. It's, it's fascinating to me if there are universes without life. It is much more fascinating to have a universe with life. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think the universe is tuned for it. Nonetheless, it's kind of silly to talk about it being any other way than the way that is conditioned for life, because here we are. Yeah, that, that's the, the fact that we know. But um, uh, if 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 I forced you to say there is no multiverse, that this universe is all there is, would that change your answer on whether this universe is fine tuned for life and mind? I think that our understanding of the emergence of life is still so nascent that we're really not in a position to say for sure that the other wildly different conditions of the universe would not also give rise to life, just a life that we would find unrecognizable. Uh, I think that this is a very specialized kind of life, just like humans are specialized relative to ocean animals. And I think that we could imagine a uni universe with totally different properties 
that still had some crazy form of life. Yeah, and, and certainly the concept of fine tuning, we look at it in our narrow sense of the current laws of physics, but many people say that there are uh, uh, different ways of combining even the current laws, so it, it's not as fine tuned as it seems, but that's an open question. All right, next. Uh, let's assume, uh, order of magnitude, that there are 10 to the 22nd to 10 to the 24th, rough order of magnitude, numbers of stars in the observable universe. Uh, what's that, roughly a trillion universes or a, 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 a galaxy? Trillion, 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 yeah. Trillion, yeah. yeah so 10 to the 20, 22nd, 20, 24th. And what we now believe is that there are at least as many planets, not very few in the ha habitable zone, but but the planets are at least as many of that. So. Here's the question. In this observable universe, 10 to the 22nd, 10 to the 24th, how <clears throat> prevalent is simple life, intelligent life, and intelligent technological life that we theoretically could communicate with? Yeah, so I, I think it's very likely that there are more planets in a galaxy than there are stars. Okay. And so planets are plentiful. They abound. Uh, I think that it would be improbable that there isn't simple life. I, I just, I feel certain we're going to discover simple life, okay. not just that it's out there, but that it's going to be within reach uh, of our tools and our techniques. Um, does simple life ensure technologically advanced civilizations? I don't know that we're that successful. I'm certainly not the first person to point this out. <laughs> we have some things to be proud of. We, we've done some wonderful things. We know things about the world and ourselves. But as a species, are we doing well in terms of our sheer survival? And factually, we just are not. Uh, is that going to be a problem for any technological species? Maybe. Maybe they just don't survive and maybe they're just a bleep in the history of their own planets. Okay, is life a happy accident or is life somehow built into the ultimate laws of physics? Very happy accident. Okay, last question. This is the big one. <laughs> Why is there something, anything at all, rather than nothing? I don't know that it's a why question. And I don't know that it will have a why type of an answer. There might simply be something instead of nothing. And that means it's it's a brute fact that's the end of the conversation. Well, it's not the end of the conversation because we're very interesting. We are here. We're alive. We're a little suicidal. <laughs> we're making the planet tough for us to yeah. you know, sustain, but we're interesting. So it's not the end of the story. The story is going to be wonderful. People are going to write books and they're going to write poems. They're going to think about science. Good. But a brute fact is okay. And you and I are going to continue to do that in our in our worlds, and hopefully we can do it together every once in a while. <laughs> Absolutely.